Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, for another edition of audio edition of Voice of Reason. This is Jake Schwartz. It's December 20th, 2015. This is a quadruple header here at Caldwell University here in Caldwell, New Jersey, as the St. Benedict's Prep Gravies have taken down the Rutgers Prep Argonauts 59 to 39. Next up will be the defending Union County champions, Linden. They will take on from the Mid-Atlantic Prep, the Hunt School, led by Philadelphia native Austin Harriet. St. Benedict's with a nice win. They go to 8-0 on the season. They will take on the Westtown School and nationally ranked player Mohamed Bamba. David Beattie, the Philadelphia native, was our player of the game. He finished with 20. was one of three players in double figures for Rutgers Prep. Jason Owe was the MVP of the game for Rutgers Prep, and he finished with 12. We'll take a break and join David after this, the 2015 edition of Voice of Reason, serving the tri-state area for high school and college sports. I'm Jake Schwartz. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 2015 Hoop Group Tip-Off Challenge, an audio edition of Voice of Reason. We are coming to you from Caldwell, New Jersey, as St. Benedict's one of four teams, who, or should say one of eight teams who are participating. They're the first winners of today's Hoop Group Tip-Off Challenge. St. Benedict's wins 59-39 to 39 over Rutgers Prep, and without further ado, it is a thrill and privilege to talk to the MVP of that game from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I've traveled many roads with this young man from the day and Archbishop Carroll, now to St. Benedict's, David Beatty. Dave, how are you? Uh, What's going on, man? I still dunk on you if you believe that. Uh, I'm just trying to get better. You, you know what? I'll tell you this, and for those of you, whatever you are listening, this is an audio edition. This is not an official uh, video, but this is a man that, again, I'm looking forward to seeing for the next two more years, and it seems like you just mentioned you're trying to get better. You feel like you're getting better at this uh, for this team? Definitely. I got better at leading my team, and you know, in about uh, 10 days from now, you'll make your triumphant return home against your old school Archbishop Carroll. What type of emotions do you think that's going to be uh, when you take the floor uh, at Wider? Um, it's going to be a hard fought game. They're always going to have a good team, and they have a good coach. So you still have a lot of respect for Paul, right? Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Paul. He's a good coach. What was the first thought when the voice came into this building today? You were thinking, oh, you knew it was on, right? Yeah, you still don't actually believe that I could still play basketball. Though. Talk about how you set the tone today with 20 points. I mean, you were one of three players of double figures, and you're playing with some of the best high school players in the country. Barama Sidibe, a double-double. Well, I should say he had 13 rebounds and a double-double for both. Um, for uh, I should say for yourself, James Scott at 18. But uh, how about Arnaldo Toro, a GW guy, 14 and 12 rebounds. Your thoughts on him? Uh, he's pretty good. He didn't play his best game, but I mean, he still got the job done. I heard you ran laps at halftime. Yeah. What's going on with that? We had to get energy. I had to get my team energy and some confidence. Do you feel like that gave you that type of energy? Yeah, we came out with a lot of energy. Uh, before you go to Archbishop Carroll, or I should say wider, coming up next will be the Slam Dunk to the Beach, a tournament you've never had the privilege of playing at a, while you were at Carroll, but you'll have the privilege this year. You'll take on uh, another former Philadelphia native, Seth Berger, at Westtown School, and then that talented La Lumiere School. What do you feel like you need to do to get this thing going? I just need to... Be a leader for my team. Just get the upset. Everybody think we're going to lose everything, but everybody think we're bad. So we just got to go out there and go up. Dave, always a pleasure to see you, my friend. I'll see you back in Philly in 10 days. Mark, you got a quick second. And the St. Benedict's Gray Bees have defeated the Rutgers Prep Argonauts 59-39. They're the first winner of the day in the day two of the 2015 Hoop Group Tip-Off Classic and an audio edition of Voice of Reason. And uh, it is a great pleasure to bring on now one of my longtime favorite New Jersey coaches and a man that I've followed down many roads with. I'm, this is only the beginning, by the way, as far as the uh, roads that you and I are going to be traveling. Mark Taylor, good to see you, my friend. Welcome to the new high school and college sports show, Voice of Reason. Thank you very much. It's always good to see you, by the way. <laughs> of course. First off, first off, you know that when, when you well, you know that when I walked in the building, you knew that this game was about to get started with the best commentator in the country coming in. <laughs> no well, doubt. let's talk about again. I've what we have here at Voice of Reason is we ask a few questions. Uh, good tradition uh, about as far as uh, where they came from and how they got started. So I know where you started. I was wondering if you could give us a quick rewind because one of your old schools is playing here late. Later today, that's St. Joe Metuchen, because that's really where a lot of people say that you got started. Uh, you coached two great players. I'd like for you to tell us who they were. Well, you know, we coached a lot of great players at, at St. Joe's. You know, I was there for almost 10 years, and 
uh, obviously we had Jason uh, Williams and Andrew Bynum, but mm -hmm. we, we had 11 other Division One players uh, while we were there that that were good kids and played hard and went on to play in college too. Yeah, and I remember uh, as a kid growing up, I, I really never got the chance to see New Jersey basketball, so I'm kind of making up for all the lost time. But I still remember the first time you and I ever met. I was going on the bus with my old high school math, civics, and science, whom it looks like you're not going to be playing anymore that hoops for troops uh, on January 2nd. We don't. Is, yeah, Lonnie, is that Lonnie decided that they had too many games or they had yeah. to drop somebody? So I guess. And he called me. You know, he was yeah. calling me nonstop for almost what a week or two because you kept calling me what every other day during the summer saying, "Hey, just let us know if math civics could play because I know how much." And I think that they made the right choice because I watched them the other night and it's just it's just not the same team that we're used to seeing. But again, uh, you have had great tradition yourself. You went from St. Joe Matuchin. You spent a few years at another school before you went yeah. to Matuchin. Uh, to St. Benedict's. Now, what was that school? Rich High School. You were at Rich High School. Yeah. Your son, I believe, is uh, part of that halftime show, I understand. He was. He, he was, was part. Did he like it? He did. He had a good time. And uh, from Ridge, you went over to St. Benedict's. Now, there's been great tradition at St. Benedict's. Danny Hurley, who's now over at Rhode Island, was a phenomenal coach as far as uh, what he did for the school, brought in players like J.R. Smith and Tristan Thompson, now of whom are in the uh, NBA, Mike Cabongo, and just the list goes on and on. But then when really you took over for a struggling St. Benedict's team coached by former NBA player Rashawn McLeod, and really I, I wrote, I read the story that the first order of business was to see uh, the future of a guy who is now in the NBA, and that's Tyler Edison. What was the first thing you did when you got to the school? Well, we got together. I, I called Tyler up and said, come on down. We got to talk, you know, and see uh, what we can do to keep you at school because with him, I knew we were going to be able to build a team around him. And uh, Tyler did. He agreed to come down, back down from Canada, visit with me, and we got to know each other a little bit. And he made a decision to stay at St. Benedict's, which was awesome. I had the privilege of uh, watching you beat up my uh, my school and, and and again I don't really want to get into what my relationship with that school is now because you know well it's kind of a back and forth type thing now I heard some jibber jabber from some of your coaches because uh, coming up yet next you're going to play West Ham. Do you still think you're better than all those Philadelphia schools? I want to. I'm getting this on tape, but I'm only kidding. But uh, let's, you know, again, you have had the privilege of bringing in some great players yourself. Melvin Johnson was another guy that I had the privilege of seeing, and uh, Kamal Richards is also a Division One player, and uh, yet another uh, Michael Young now at Pittsburgh. So you've had some great success, whether it was Matuchin, whether it was Ridge. I mean, I don't remember a Division One player at the Ridge School, but I do remember, because Benedict's is always just, again, what can you say about a great school like, say, Benedict's? Well, it's a great place to coach. I mean, the mission of the school is, is so much more than just what we do for the basketball program. So, you know, it's building young men to be prepared for everything they're going to face in life. And, and basketball is just one facet of that. So the thing about St. Benedict's, which is so tough, is academically they got to perform. They got to perform as men. They got to perform as citizens. They got to perform in the classroom. Well, they have and, to be good students. Then, student athletes is uh, yeah, what it I seems. I say it like. all the time. It's it's not athlete student. It's called student athletes. You got to be a student first, and then and follow that up with what you do on the court and how you do it. So um, we've been fortunate enough to have great kids and. Uh, and uh, it's been a good run. Yeah, you've had, uh, today was another just good example of why this could be another nationally ranked program. Now 8-0 overall on the season. You got my first Philly guy, by the way. You got David Beatty. What's that been like, coaching a guy well, like we him? Got, we got two. We got David. And Beattie David Wall. And, and Damon Wall. I love David. Phenomenal we human love, being. We love Philly Philly players. No, you did not yeah, say. Yeah, I know, so I believe you. Philly, Philly players, the kids are tough, and they, they play hard, and they play defense, and uh, you know, David's very talented. Damon's going to be uh, yeah. another one, I think, following in his shoes in a couple sure. years. He's going to be there. So we're, we're excited, and uh, you know, hopefully we get some more guys from down there. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, you know, that, well, that's why when you call, that's why when I know that. Well, it's if good to get out of the city sometimes. Well, if too. you're going to bring Philly guys, I already know what phone, who's going to be calling. 
me, and that's probably going to be you, right? I already know who's making a phone call. Might as well. You got someone for me? Let me know. I got. I take another player right now. You had a double double today from George Washington, Arnold, yeah. Arnaldo Toro, AT, who's been just a great addition ever since he arrived. Barabas Sidibe, thirteen rebounds as well, and ten blocks. And t- I thought it was seven. We had ten. So he had. So he had a double double of his own. He did. And only had. Correct me if I'm wrong. Just four points. Yeah, so he struggled on the offensive end today. I thought. I thought our, our guards didn't do a great job today offensively. We we got flat and held the ball too long against the zone, and we didn't really move it. And that that made it difficult for the inside guys, other than an offensive rebound. And our transition, we didn't we didn't convert the way we normally do. Yeah, and coming up next, Westtown School La Lumiere. As you head down to the slam dunk to the beach, your final thoughts uh, on that. And uh, we'll uh, look forward to ten days from now when you play Archbishop Carroll. And what does the season look like for this St. Benedict team? Uh, never ends. Uh, we just we play so many good teams, and Westtown's next. So that's the only game we're thinking about right now. And Westtown's very good. They got some great players. <laughs> Kid Reddish is good. The point guard's going to George Washington with uh, with Arnaldo, and they That's got the big kid band. But yeah, I mean they're good. So we're gonna we're gonna prepare for that, and we have a few days off for the Christmas break, and then we're back in the gym. Mark, Merry Christmas to you, my friend. I'll see you on the thirtieth. And uh, always a thrill when I get to see my one of my one of my favorite North Jersey coaches, Mark Taylor. Thank you again for joining us, David Beatty as well. As St. Benedict's has defeated Rutgers Prep, fifty-nine to thirty-nine. David Beatty, Philadelphia native, our player of the game with 20 points, and Mark Taylor again. It's always a thrill to see him, the former coach of many NBA players, including Jay Williams and Andrew Barnum. Back with more after this. Hey, we're going to be here all day, folks. The 2015 Hoop Group Tip-Off Classic from Caldwell College here in West Orange, New Jersey. I'm Jake Schwartz for the Hoop Group Tip-Off Classic for Voice of Reason. Hello, everybody. For an audio edition of Voice of Reason, this is Jake Schwartz here at I should say here at the magnificent Caldwell University here in Caldwell, New Jersey. It's December 20th. We want to thank David Beatty, a Philadelphia native, as St. Benedict's wins the first game against the very talented Ruckus Prep 59-39. Currently, it's a tight one between Linden of the, I should say, Union County, and they're taking on Mid-Atlantic Prep's uh, HUD School. Coming up next will be the third game between the three-time state NJSIA champion Roseau Catholic Lions. They'll take on Newark Eastside and the man who is joining us is a man I've had the privilege of working with over the last year or so. I'm returning once again for the Hoops for Truths. We've never had this man who has totally revolutionized Roseau Catholic basketball and has had some of the great basketball players come through that institution from Tyler Roberson to Isaiah Briscoe and now that the talent that's coming in, one of my dearest friends, Dave Boff. It's great to see you, and welcome to the new high school and college sports show for the Tri-State Area Voice of Reason. Thank you very much for having me, boys. Great to see you. It, it is always likewise, and a happy holidays to you. Congratulations. I hear you and the missus just bought a house. I was on Facebook the other day. I did see that. Now, this is your first, uh, your new uh, your new house. What, how new is house, that? Yes, how is house. it? How is it? It's great. We're very excited. Well, that's really not the reason. If I wanted to talk about stuff like that, I'd just go on uh, one of those fashion shows. Uh, <laughs> but let's talk about uh, your situation because you have I've had the privilege of working with you for many years. You have brought in some great players. Tyler Roberson now at Syracuse as I mentioned and Isaiah Briscoe who has dominated the basketball world at the University of Kentucky and uh, you were at that game yesterday in New York, were you not? I actually was supposed to go but I ended up not being There was like 40 so people I, I actually yeah, heard. I it at home. Was uh, there anybody from uh, RC there? A bunch of, bunch of uh, Roseau. Kind how did he look? Uh, he, played. He, he played? He played pretty well. He's been doing very well down there. We're, we're real proud of them. You know, they, they suffered a loss yesterday to Ohio State, yep. but we're sure that they'll bounce back in their next one. Who was that like coaching a guy like Isaiah? Because there was a time when this guy was the most feared player, no. not just in the state of How Jersey, but nationally ranked. Right. JV? How many freshmen playing JV? Um... I'm sorry, boys. What was that? Oh, that's, a, that's all right. Let, let's. Uh, we're going to pretend that we did not just hear that. But I, I think he wants to know how many freshmen are playing JV, though. But that's okay, though. Um, but what I wanted to ask was because I remember just everybody was talking about Isaiah Briscoe. And he was all over Twitter. He was blowing up on social media. So what was that like coaching a guy like him? Uh, it, it was great. You know, Isaiah is, um, you know, obviously such a talent. But he was also, as I've said many times, the best leader I think that we've had uh, during my time at Roselle Catholic. Um, so to, to be able to coach him was 
uh, a real pleasure, and um, you know he did some amazing things for uh, our school and our basketball program. We had Chris Silva, who's at USC at South Carolina, who's also a very good big man. Pierre Sars done some great things over at Monmouth, and uh, let's not forget about just the talent that you have. But you know, I remember when I was just thinking about what questions should I ask Coach Dave Boff. I was just thinking about what does Dave Boff do after losing four seniors to graduation after Tyler Roberson and Hakeem, uh, Hakeem St. Teal and then losing four seniors. What does he do? He only brings in Leandre Washington from Teaneck, who's one of the most talented guards in the state of New Jersey, and nationally ranked players from Maryland, Andre Rafis and Nate Pierre-Lewis of St. Benedict's to go along with senior Matt Bullock and the number six 2018 player, Nasrion Reed. What's that, what has that been like so far? Uh, so far, it's, it's only been one progress. game. Yeah, I know that. Work in progress. You know, a um, bunch of new guys, a uh, bunch of young guys that we're trying to get on the same page. So, um, you know, we'll be... Uh, Hopefully we'll be a real good team at the end of the year. But right now, you know, it's just about getting everybody on the same page, trying to do the same things. You've got some really good matchups coming up. You'll head down to Slam Dunk to the beach following this game against Newark Eastside. You will then host the Hoops for Troops, which uh, i got to ask this uh, as a – there's this announcer who's going to be announcing Hoops for Troops. What, what is, who is that announcer that's supposed to do your Linden versus Roseau Catholic? That's the voice. That would absolutely be the voice. And I, you're very welcome, and I appreciate uh, everything you've done for someone like myself. And uh, you've certainly impacted my life as well. And I've been very uh, blessed and fortunate to be a part of the Roseau Catholic family. So I thank, thank you, you for that as well. Well, you're very welcome as well. But um, today, Newark Eastside, uh, Taj Price if he's, I think he is still there. Because I had, I didn't actually, I was looking at the program book and I did not see his name in there. He's going to NGIT. What is the thing, this will really be the first big test on the floor today. What do you feel like you need to do? Oh, we're going to have to, you know, compete. You know, Eastside plays so hard. They, they work very hard. Um, you know, they're going to leave it all out on the floor and we're going to have to match that level of intensity. If we, if we play, you know, hard and compete on every possession, I think we'll be in good shape. But we're going to have to match that level of intensity that they bring. Are you happy? Happy to have guys like Andre Rafis and A. Pierre Lewis's additions this year to go along with the two returning players of uh, Nas and uh, Matt Bullock. Absolutely, they're, they're they're good kids, and they're getting um, some pretty good looks, right? Yeah, Each of them are having looks. a Absolutely. good Division One offer. I'm, uh, can I ask? Are they? Uh, they're all like what? Uh, oh, that's the uh, the men's is over here. Uh, are they getting uh, like A. Ten, Big Ten, Big Twelve, Big East? Any of yeah, those? They're getting a lot of they're getting a lot of mid to high major uh, attention. So um, you know, but those are the things that we'll worry about towards the end of the year. Right now, we're just going to try to focus on what we have to do um, here against Eastside. Join us, of course, on January 2nd. I'm going to be the announcer for the, tri I should say, Hoops for Troops uh, Challenge, the main event of the game, I, although I think all four games should be very good, and that'll be Linden versus Roseau Catholic in the uh, Union County Tournament rematch. And uh, Boffy, it's always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Dave Boff, the head coach of Roseau Catholic. Thanks I hope boys. to talk to some of your players after the game. That's head coach Dave Boff. Good luck this afternoon against Newark Eastside. Dave Boff, the head coach at Roseville Catholic. Roseville Catholic, the defending two-time TOC Tournament of Champions as well as the very talented, uh, I should also point out, they are the three-time defending state champions. Coming up next uh, will be Roseville Catholic and Newark Eastside. We'll try to find some more people to interview. They're the 2015 edition of high school's uh, 2015 Hoop Group Tip-Off Challenge. I'm Jake Schwartz for Voice of Reason at High School Basketball. Hello, everyone. For Voice of Reason, this is Jake Schwartz here at the Caldwell University, the Hoop Group Tip-Off Classic. Linden and Hunt at halftime, and look who I just found, our old buddy from St. Anthony's, Jagan Mosley, headed to Georgetown University. Welcome to Voice of Reason. It's so good to see you, as always. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You look good every time I see you. I still think I'm better looking than – I still think I could dunk on you, though, one-on-one, -on -one, but congratulations on your commitment to Georgetown, playing for the legendary Bob Hurley Sr., and I always enjoy watching you play. I had the privilege of seeing you here during the summer when you were playing at Jimmy Salvin's The Weekend Tournament. Uh, that was a very good tournament that weekend. You did not win at all, but at least you did compete with some of the best talent in the country. Uh, tell us about that tournament. Uh, we had just received Daniel Mating at that tournament, so we were trying to get him involved, get our team chemistry up, and now we have a lot more players. That's over. right. Uh, Daniel Matting was actually playing at his first yep. official tournament. How's that been going to have an addition like him? And uh, you know, You've also got Caleb Bishop is now here, and uh, Sante Gist, 
a former uh, player of Roselle Catholic, and uh, you just have a lot of talent again this year. St. Anthony should be again an Ashley Wright team, play another very tough schedule. Uh, what's been going on with the school so far, and uh, how's the record? What is the record right now? Right now we're two and zero. Oh. We just finished beating the top two teams in Arizona. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right, Mesa. Uh, you were in the Mesa Mesa Vista Challenge, if I'm correct about that. The Hoop Hall West Challenge. That's that's right. That's oh. right. You did play. You were in the uh, Hoop uh, Hall edition of the Western yeah. edition. Had, who did you face in those two? Uh, First we played Corona Del Sol. Yeah, they're always good. Yeah. And then we played um, Shadow Mountain. I've never, I, I mean, the names sound a little Mike familiar. Mike Bibbison. Yes, that's yeah. right. How, how are they? They're pretty good. Um, his son, Mike Bibby Jr., is a great great shooter, but we held him only five points. Uh, J.J. Rhymes, also a great player. I think he had 20 in that game. But we wanted to keep one of them in check, so we, we, we got our goal. I've had the privilege of working with your entire family. I knew your brother, Chetty, back when he was playing for Coach Bob Hurley. I've asked him this before, and I'll ask you this before. When you think of a guy who's one of three high school coaches ever to be in the Hall of Fame and Bob Hurley, what does that what does that mean for someone like you? It's a home experience, it's a blessing to play for someone who's a Hall of Fame. You gotta take everything he says in stride and you know that whatever he says is for the best. Is he that good of a coach? Fantastic coach. He could be the best there ever was best as far coach. as as far as high school basketball. I know they say there's Morgan Wooten and then they say there's Jack Curran out in Archbishop Malloy and there's a lot of great coaches in the lifetime. I mean I personally believe Speedy Morris is one of the greatest coaches in the history of high school because he's out in Philadelphia. You talk about Kevin Boyles, one of those great coaches, but what has Bob Hurley, what has he been like both as a coach and as a person? Well, as a coach, he's not he's not stubborn. So he, he realizes that the game is changing. So he knows he has to uh, pick up new things. He, he, he constantly goes to coaching clinics. He's have new things to learn for our team to get our team better. You've got a lot of good talent uh, again coming in, as I mentioned before. What do you have up next as far as before the Christmas break? Next we have Newark Westside in our first home game, and then we have the Skyline Classic. Uh, we play Pope John I and St. Patrick's, I believe. You will face yeah, Mike Rice. January, yeah. What's what's that going to be like uh, going up against an old friend? Uh, well, last year we beat them, so we have the bragging rights as of right now. I heard you don't have to deal with Nick Richards in that game because he's got a concussion. He has a concussion. I did not. Well, he know. had a con he has a concussion. It was the latest report I had heard. Mm -hmm. So I know he's not playing at City of Palms, but Cyril Lagvide, Bryce Aiken are still two of the top players who also played here at the weekend tournament here at Caldwell. What's that going to be like when you play in that tournament? Is a uh, go back St. Anthony's versus St. Pat's rivalry. It's be a great game. What if I'm playing in that game? Who wins? Me. You still, you still don't actually believe that. Jake and Mosley, always a pleasure. Congratulations on your commitment Thank to Georgetown. You. Good luck to you this season. We'll definitely look forward to seeing you down the road. That's uh, Jake and Mosley, Dave Boff, as well as Rosa Catholic for joining us. It's halftime again here at the Hoop Group Tip-Off Classic for our new high school and college edition of the Tri-State uh, Sports Edition of Voice of Reason. I'm Jake Schwartz from Caldwell University. Back here at the 2015 Hoop Group audio edition of the Hoop Group Tip-Off Classic and uh, Hunt School falling short to the Linden School, 55-50, to and uh, joined by my good buddy uh, Austin Harriet who is now starring over at the Hunt School, Loyola, Maryland, commit. Tough one today, my friend, but uh, it's always good to see you on the other end. Uh, it's good to see you, too. Yeah, uh, just talk to me and what happened in, that, uh, in this game today. Uh, just was, they played tougher. They came out harder, they worked harder, they rebounded. They got a lot of offensive rebounds and then called second chance points. You got a lot of good talent this team. Jose Morales led the way with 22 points. What are your thoughts on him? He's a great player. He's tough, he plays smart defense. Shoot the ball and drive. We do it all. So he's not as good as the voice. I'm only teasing, though. But um, just talk about what's been going on since you transitioned from Germantown Friends uh, here to the Hunt School. Uh, just been preparing me for college, making me stronger, faster, smarter, better gameplay. Just getting ready for college and get ready for a tougher basketball. What's your next matchup? Next matchup probably be sometime in January. Right. That's what I figured. Austin, good to see you. Have a safe trip home. Happy holidays to you, my friend. That's Austin Harry again joining yeah, us. To see you on, uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's Austin Harry again joining us. It's 22 to 20 right now. Score is 22 to 20. Uh, Roseau Catholic again is on top. Thanks to Austin Harry again for joining us. We're back online in a few moments. I'm Jake Schwartz again for Voice of Reason at the 2015 Hoop Group Tip Off Classic. Hello, everybody, for an audio edition of Voice of Reason. This is Jake Schwartz. Another nice win for the Roseau Catholic Lions, the three time defending NJSIA non public state champions have won again. This time it's a final score. 
about 79 to 56. We'll join Andre Rafis momentarily. 23 points on five three-pointers. And a nice job again for Dave Boff's bunch. It was a sloppy first half with 10 or more turnovers, but boy, did they respond here in the second half. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Back here with Voice of Reason at the Hoop Group's tip-off classic. Andre Rafis, the pride, former pride of St. Francis Academy. Good to see you, my friend. 23 points on five three-pointers. What can you say about this win? And what a big transition from Maryland to the nationally ranked Roselle Catholic. Your thoughts on this game today? And this really was not your night until the second half. You know, uh, wasn't feeling well today. You know, I got a real bad cold. You know? I didn't realize that. So if you sneeze on me, I'm going to be very upset, though. Yeah, so I was just focusing on winning this game. You know, my coaches and my teammates have a lot of faith in me and what the abilities I can make. So I thank them for that. And I'm just glad that we got a win today. A lot of, a lot of transfers that have come in again, as mentioned. You're among five players in double figures. Lee Andre Washington, 15, Matt Bullock, 11, and the Serbian Witker Sewell with 10, and also former St. Benedict player Nate Pierre Lewis. Your thoughts on them today? Well, I, I just think that they play really well, and I'm just glad we got the win. Andre, we'll see you at Hoops for Troops. Congratulations, right. my friend. That's Andre Rafis with a big win again as Roselle Catholic defeats Newark Eastside 79 to 56. They're back to the national ranks. They're now 2 0 to start their year. Coming up next fourth and final game of the night it's St. Joe Matuchin and McDonald All-American Tyus Battle. They'll take on Ramapo next. I'm Jake Schwartz for Voice of Reason. Welcome back to another audio edition of Voice of Reason. This is Jake Schwartz here at the magnificent Caldwell University here in Caldwell, New Jersey. The Hoop Group tip-off classic is now officially done, and a nice day again, as mentioned. Wins today by both uh, Roseau Catholic, St. Benedict's, Linden, and now St. Joe Matuchin. All winners here today at the Hoop Group tip-off challenge. We're hopefully going to be joined again by both Bree and Tyree and Tyus Battle with uh, nice wins uh, here today and uh, hopefully we'll talk with Bree and Tyree in a few moments. Bree is headed to University of Mississippi in the deep south. 55-49 St. Joe Matuchin is now a winner. And uh, if we could just have a quick second, Mr. Tyus Battle. How are you, my friend? Good to see you. Good to see you. Get a quick word with Tyus Battle. Tyus, congratulations again. It's always, first of all, great to see you. And uh, thank you for coming on the new high school and college sports show for the Tri-State Area Voice of Reason. Uh, first off, slow start once again for you, but uh, you really set that tone. 19, most of which come in the second half. Just talk about how you held on for this win today. Uh, well, first half, I wasn't really uh, getting to the basket much. But the second half, I made a priority to get to the basket and uh, get to the foul line. And that was a uh, big key to the game. All, I think all the players just trying to get to the basket more in the second half and, and then that help us a lot. You were a little over aggressive you think maybe the whole team it kind of seems like was a little over aggressive in that first half though because kind of taking too many shots that they really should not have taken kind of shots that were a little out of their range right? Oh uh, well yeah, it's just it's going to take we're a new team. Yeah you know, I was going to say it's only your second game yeah. of the year. <laughs> yeah so, so it's going to take some time uh, against to know where people want to be in certain spots and what their favorite spot is on the floor so it's going to come with uh, just playing together more and uh, I think we should be pretty good at the end of the road. Lonzo Frank 10 points uh, what a performance performance that uh, he had tonight, not to mention your new backcourt or, or mate, Brian Tyree, what a job he had really in the second half because, again, this was really uh, just a better second half type of performance and your thoughts on those two and uh, what, is, what has been the best transition coming from, and I'm not saying that uh, Gil St. Bernard's is not a bad school because it is. I think Gil St. Bernard's, you know that I had the privilege of, of covering you back in your days when you were at Gil St. Bernard's. What has been the big transition coming from Gil to say Joe Matuchin because you know that's a school that produces uh, good players too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, I think the transition is going really well so far. Um, everybody at the school is welcoming. Uh, teams are welcoming and uh, it's a family environment. I, I really love the school so far. So. What about Dave Turco? What's he been like to you? Uh, he, you know, this is a guy that's had some great success. Yeah. Recently um, drafted Carl Anthony Towns, by the way. Yeah. Well, uh, Coach Turco and uh, Coach Murray are like completely opposite ends of the spectrum. Uh, Co Coach Turco is a little more uh, laid back back, and, uh, but he really gets on us sometimes, and Coach Murray is more uh, demonstrative and uh, a little more, uh, he's louder, 
a lot of smoking. So, uh, but they're both amazing coaches. Uh, and Coach Sugar is a great coach, and, uh, and proving, it, proving it here, uh, come up with a big one at the end. Of the year. You got your thousandth point at Hoop Group Tip-Off Classic. Could you think of another? Could you think of any better night than to score at Hoop Group, a place that I've seen you play in, in the past? Uh, this is a great, I know you like Hoop Group. Yeah, here. I like Hoop Group a lot. It's a great feeling. I've been coming here since I was. I don't know how old. Probably, I, it's probably as long as I've known you, because yeah. I've I've known you since you were probably, oh my goodness, probably since you were 13, yeah. because I watched you play at Team Final. I yeah. watched you when you were a younger, before you grew out the Afro yeah. a little, and now you've got an offspring who's kind of following yeah. in your footsteps. What's it like having your little brother, Khalif, who's considered one of the top freshmen in the country? Uh, okay, Khalif, he's, he's been getting a lot I thought better. it was Khalif. Uh, okay, it's Khalif. Khalif. Yeah. Khalif. 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 Yeah. Khalif, I'm sorry. Um, Khalif. He's, uh, this is great for him a little bit, you know, that's that's the main reason why, that's the main reason, um, a goal that we want to do, uh, coming into high school, just play at least one year in high school together. Um, he's, and just seeing him improving over the years is just an amazing thing. Wanted to also congratulate you on going to Syracuse, but Michigan, that's also a great school, and had I been Zeke McCall in the movie Love and Basketball, I probably would have told you to stay at Michigan, because Zeke McCall said to his son, I don't care about the basketball, I want you to get a good education. Are you looking to get a good education at a school like Syracuse as well, or you probably would have enjoyed getting an education at a school like Michigan, but uh, you're, you're, I know you're definitely trying to go pro in the next few years, but uh, do you feel like you could get a good education at a school like Syracuse? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah without a doubt. That's, that's a really one of the best schools in the country. Yeah, that, that's a big reason why I went to Gill starting off, just to, for the education factor. Um, I think Gill has helped me, uh, yes. helped me uh, come out my shell, especially in the classroom, because I'm a, pretty much a laid-back guy, pretty quiet. Uh, but Gill helped me a lot with that. And Michigan, that's, that's a big reason why I chose it in the first place, because the education because of the action, yep. Yeah, so, but definitely at Syracuse, I really want to get into the business school, hopefully. Business school? Uh, yeah, business school. No, I, I, I have a recommendation for you, and I think we should go with the Newhouse yeah, School. Newhouse you're going to be a communicator, right. you're going to be a broadcaster like The Voice. Yeah. You don't want to be like The Voice? How can you not want to be like The I Best Friends? Like it. Tyus, it's always a pleasure to see you. Congratulations, right, my friend. I'll you. see you definitely thank down the road. Right. Where is Bree and Tyree? Is Bree and... Oh. oh, we'll hopefully talk with Bree and Tyree in a few moments. Thank you, Tyus Battle, for joining us. Tyus Battle, our voice of reason to play the game with 19 points, one of three scores in double figures, as St. Joe Matucha goes to 2-0 with a 55-49 win over Ramapo High. Hello, everybody, for another audio edition of Voice of Reason. Our final guest of the night here at uh, Caldwell College is a man I had the privilege of working from Under Armour all the way back to the high school circuit. That's Brian Tyree. Brian, congratulations. It was uh, it was close, but at the end of the day, you'll take this win. How big is this win again? Uh, it's a big win. You know, every win is a big win. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to keep everything going, keep the loss category at zero, and just keep the season going in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, Ty battle. What an addition he has been along with Alonzo Frank and then of course uh, Bratislav Vucad Inovic, the uh, Serbian, who have made some really good additions for your team this year. And uh, This is a team that just drafted the number one player in Carl Towns in the NBA. There's been some great tradition going on. Do you feel like you can keep this tradition going in the state of New Jersey? Um, big shoes to fill, but I think we can definitely do it. Coming up next, Jingle Bell uh, Jubilee uh, uh, hosted by Jimmy Salmon. Your thoughts on uh, before closing out 2015? Um, just we're going to go out and we're going to work as hard as we can, like we always do, no matter who we're playing, who's on the opposite side of the court. And uh, if we do that, I don't think there's many teams that can beat us. Brian, congratulations. Always a pleasure, my friend. Uh, best of luck here in the uh, 2015 and uh, should say in the Jingle Bell Jubilee. Congratulations. Go out to St. Joe Matouche and Falcons and they defeat the Ramapo Green Raiders 55-49. to Thanks again to Brian Tyree, a future Ole Miss and Syracuse commit ties battle future McDonald All-American. Also, special thanks go out to Georgetown Bounds and St. Anthony's Jacob Mosley, along with Roso Catholic's Andre Rafis, along with the coaches Dave Boff and Mark Taylor. Also want to give out a special thank you to all of our guests who stopped by, from, the, from every single coach to every single type of player. Thanks to Rob Kennedy, his wonderful staff at the Hoop Group, and to all the good people at Caldwell University serving over 75 years. Don't forget to find us on our YouTube uh, channel, Voice of Reason, Hoop Group. Group tip-off classic. We'll have that up hopefully later on tonight or sometime early tomorrow. Again, congratulations to Roselle Catholic, St. Joe Matuchin, Linden High School, 
and St. Benedict's. Also thanks to my Philly buddies, David Beattie and Austin Harry. Until then, from all of us in the 2015 Hoop Group Tip-Off Challenge, I'm Jake Schwartz. We'll see you at Friends Central, or should say Haverford's uh, School tomorrow when Haverford School takes on Friends Central. I'm Jake Schwartz for Voice of Reason. We'll see you at the games.